Hello and welcome back to Disco Elysium. So, I've looked at our journal and I've discovered something we need to do. Let's not find our heraldic bird as much as I'd like to. Run the number on the victim's armor. Now, we've already done it, so if we go back down, we should, in theory, in theory, be able to find out who the victim is. But we already know who the victim is, but you know what I mean, like, find out more. You get the feeling someone's watching you. Behind the glass, a woman. Okay. But we can find out more about the victim, which should be good. Assuming the victim was the armor's owner, which it might not have been, I guess. This room has sad all over. It reminds you of your own. Oh, wow. We're thinking good thoughts, huh? It's also quarter past seven. We should really go speak to Joyce. <laughs> At some point. You'd think. Yeah. Okay. So, let's go speak to... Um, also, ready for karaoke, but... Let's go find out about the armor's owner. Then we need to speak to Titus about the door gunner Megamix. Then we need to speak to Joyce. Then we need to go and speak to the person in the other apartment. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff to do. I don't know if it's evening yet, so I don't know if we can actually karaoke just yet. Anyway. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, pick up the radio. Uh, connect me to, um... Uh, wait a second. I thought that she was the one I asked to get run the number. Call Alice back in a day for info. Info, yeah. Okay. I wanted to speak to Alice. But, wait. Oh, there we go. Did you find out more about the armor, the owner of the armored boots? I missed it entirely. Yes, I got the mercenary's name and a few biographical details. Are you ready? Lieutenant leans in to listen, his notebook in hand. Shoot. That suit of armor was issued to an Orangi citizen named Ellis uh, Cortenaire. That's E-L-L-I-S-K-O-R-T-E-N-A-E-R. -E -E exact date of birth unknown. He was signed into the Lelestad uh, County Neonatal Care Unit on the 28th of February, uh, 09. Neonatal Care Unit? He was found as a newborn in a leaf compactor near an abandoned farm. He spent four months in the neonatal unit, survived apparently, and was assigned to a foster family at two. Uh, this is why the ICP knows about him. He was raised by foster parents, entered into the uh, Is Yizbrand uh, Military Academy in the Red Fort at 17, then served in the RNG's uh, forces till he was honorably discharged in 41, just a year before the Seminese conflict. Then the armor followed him to Seminine, or at least I assume it did, and that's it. There's no records of his employment in Crenel or any other incarcerations, or him even entering Revishal. Wait, it was found in a leaf compactor? Uh, it's a garden tool used to press leaves into these cubes. It's a detail the hospital had, and the only detail in, the in these files, so I thought it would be good for you to know. It is. Thank you, Alice. Any information on his foster parents? None, officer. Sorry. Uh, so, all we have to connect him to Krennel is the armor. Even that is a small miracle. These organizations usually double-check their inventory. He leans closer and shouts, Thank you, Alice. Good work. No problem, Lieutenant. She sounds pleased. Well, now we have his name and service record now. A name that is very good. Ellis Cortenia, he says to himself. This means something to him. To know that name, like naming a case, is important. Sometimes police work is about human dignity and giving back names to anonymous victims. I'm glad the inquiry was helpful to your investigation, officer. Do you have any other questions? Uh, I'm done, yeah. Uh, 57th over and out. Alright, well. That's good, we have a name. I mean, it's not too helpful. We already knew a lot of what was going on there, but it's good to just have confirmation. Do we have two... I think we have two level-ups. Yeah, we have two skill points available. Cool. Um, Backyard wall opened again? Huh. I mean, we could try it. Um, Let's speak to Titus first. We're running out of time for today. Let's focus on, on things that are useful. Right. So, Titus, we need to talk about the door gunner Megamix. See what's going on there. 
Right. Hello, Titus. It's you again. What is it? So I talked to Classe about the uh, tape. And... And nothing. She stands by what she said. That fucking fucker. He stares at his beer for two seconds intently, then turns to you. You're the worst cops in Revishall. I gave you gold on that tape. That fucker wasn't aimed at you. It was at her. Um... Gold. It was just locker room talk. It's not evidence. Locker room talk. What are you, fucking brain dead? I've been to plenty of locker rooms. They don't plan rapes there. And w what did she have to say then? Fine by her? This is what people are supposed to be like? Fucking whoop de doo Um... Well... Actually, I think it made her a little nostalgic. Yes, in fact. Lieutenant looks at you, then him. I think she thought it was a little funny. Funny? Titus mumbles, his lips barely moving. No good, doll, goddamn psycho whore. Seems like they wanted to give Classe a second chance to play along. She still didn't. Alright. He slams a, his giant fist on the doorframe. All fucking right, then. I guess it's good, then, that fucking... Please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. Her voice is a bit softer than earlier. Titus rubs his chin with his palm, as if trying to grind it smooth. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawman? You don't have to say everything out loud. Just mix and match. Um... Hmm. I think you had a lie planned, but she didn't play along. I asked you for your opinion, not a bedtime story. Tell it to your grandma. Um, this tape was the last chance for her to do what was planned. But she didn't. She knows she can't lie to us, unlike you. Oh no, he's definitely compromised too. It's his hubris. Sadly, not much to do about it now. I love that we've got like this ally in Volition now. Of course, yes, she could have been lying the whole time. Hmm. Fantastic. So now you remember how to do your job. He despondently glances at his beer. I'm so sick of this piss. We should get something harder in here. Yeah, guys, we should get a party going tonight. Why? Uh, uh, he looks at the old man in the corner. Maybe not, then. Success. They admitted to unlawful collaboration to derail the investigation. Maybe she isn't who you thought she was. Nah, I know her. He looks upstairs distracted. Just a girl laying over her head. Um... Okay. Titus, she has my whole skill set compromised. She's some kind of pro. What kind of pro? You saying she's a hooker? He forces himself to pick up his beer and take a gulp. No, he's not saying that. Forget about it. Be straight with me, Titus. What really happened? I already told you. He puts his giant face in his hands and sighs. We fucking hanged him. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men, too, are growing increasingly silent. Come on, Titus. It's been a long day. I'm tired of running back and forth between you. I can see you're tired, too. Why don't you just... You know what? He gets closer. I am tired. Tired of you in the hole upstairs. Next time you see her, tell Titus said, fuck it off. He throws his beer can down. A uh, lion scam. We're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. There's silence in the room. Elaine starts saying something then thinks best not to. On the floor, beer drips out of the can into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. What's this quiet funeral shit? What we need is some beers in us. He looks around. Bartender! 20 beers for the dock workers union. Why don't we make it 40, huh? The man shouts from behind the counter. Why don't we make it a hundred beers? You're not loud enough. A hundred beers? Now we're talking. Glenn livens up. Hibbity hobbity over here, cafeteria manager. Ooh, with rhetoric. We can convince Titus he's being manipulated. Alright, let's leave it a second. I want to see if we have any rhetoric bo boosts. Hmm... I don't see any rhetoric boosts, but that's okay. Um, 
None yet. I don't know if we have rhetoric. Oh, there we go. The white polo shirt. That's good. Ooh, that's minus. Okay. So we should have a rhetoric of one. Let me have a look over at this side. We have a rhetoric of one. Yeah, and that's all we can do with rhetoric, I think. Right now. It's you again. What is it? Titus, you're being manipulated. Convince Titus he's being manipulated? You should know by now, Titus Hardy will never falter. One of his boys will. Fat Angus, the powerful guy. Mr. All Muscle. The time has come. Put him in the pressure cooker. Just remember, it's, it's um, more than it's about more than Clashé. It's about these men and Martinez, their district, their responsibility. That's it then. Case closed. We're going home, Kim. Huh? Lieutenant raises his brow. You'll get it. Go on. Write it down, Kim. In Martinez, they just kill you because they don't like you. God did. He takes out his notebook. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... Uh, because they like killing. Yeah, we liked it. It was fun, wasn't it, guys? He looks around. We had a great time. It wasn't fucking entertainment, Dennis. She... He gets hold of himself. They kill you, he jots down, because they think it's funny. Um... Yeah. They just hang you, like in the Dark Ages. They make a display of your corpse. It, it wasn't that. It wasn't, the fat man says with a wheeze. We, could, we, we couldn't get him down, okay? That's it, the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer, you will be next if you don't shut up. The old man reaches for his belt, but his voice is strangely calm. Firearm. A glance. Uh, oh wait, or... 38 caliber pistol. Either is small enough for you to have missed. He's on to you. He knows what you're trying to do. Steal yourself. Push on. Just ignore Theo. Um, or what? You're gonna fucking... Uh, you're gonna kill me like you killed him for no fucking reason? Looking at Angus. We didn't kill him. We didn't even hang him. He was dead when... He takes a breath, wheezing. Shut up, Angus. He was dead before you hanged him. Fatty. The the little old... Uh, the little guy hits Angus on the back of his head. A loud slap. Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... Dennis. Titus roars. Stand down or I'll beat your head in. Theo. He points to the old man. Take your hand off that of the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. The room falls silent. So quiet you can hear Angus wheeze. Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I, le I left it home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. He grabs his chest. I'm sorry. Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? Lizzie snaps him. Now it's all pointless because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. He turns to him. I told you just to give her up. Lizzie. He turns to the fixer. Your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Everard. Fine, I'll tell him after after a long after a long walk along the coast. She walks off without looking back. What just happened between these two? You're in. He's all yours. Questions. Kim, we did it. Lieutenant gives a smile only you can see. I'm sorry I made you guys fight. Me too. So you didn't kill him. He was already dead. He nods. You hang the corpse just to cover up the real cause of death. What was it? We're not sure. Probably a bullet. The wound was difficult to see. The coroner and his assistant are wrapped in blue. Hands covered in blue gloves. Mouths covered by blue masks. Bodies by blue aprons. They lived in a blue house. Uh, so, sorry, that's uh, that's Eiffel. Um, four, four, 41? 40? Anyway, whatever. Um, the coroner wipes his brow. Scalpel still in his hands. Get the light. Shine it in his mouth, he tells his assistant. The cor uh, The coroner squats to better see the light illuminating the darkness inside. Well, shit. Can't blame them for missing that. Get this all, Alan. This just got fun. Why? Because the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. Girls, plural. There's another girl, two of them. Take note of this. They'll probably say more about her later. Um, did she kill him? Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. He doesn't think she did, or at least hopes she didn't. 
whammed Sunday night. Lachey came down. He points to the stairs. She seemed really out of it, drugged up, even more than usual. bug ad and gurning, you know? Not in a fun way. The loot lad she'd been redosed after something went down. I've seen that loot before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. How did you know? I've done this job for 10 years. I've seen it before. It's a politician in the motel room with a dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. The rat-faced man snickers. And you don't get to talk yet, Shanky. He points at him. You're still on the bench. You And you keep taking it easy too, Angus. He turns back to you. What happened then? We went upstairs. Sure as day, the merc was dead. There was a bullet hole through the window. Fuck him. He scratches his chin. Dirty shapes and bottles everywhere. He means they've been fucking? Tibbs patched the window and the corpse. We hanged. Who's Tibbs? The 8th Hardy? He nods. You hanged the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. What was it? We're not sure. Probably a bullet. The uh, wound was uh, difficult to see. The coroner and his assistant are wrapped in blue. Hands covered by blue gloves. Mouths covered in blue masks. Bodies by blue aprons. Oh, let's try this again. Lived in a blue house on a blue street. Uh, yes, okay. It, it wasn't funny the first time, and it not funny this time. This is the same one. This is the exact same one. Yes. Right. We we already did this. Yeah, we did. We've did this exact thing. This is we've done all of this. Yeah, yeah. Literally the. And then we can ask who Tibbs is again, and then we loot. Okay, fine. If Clajet didn't kill him, why the cover up? You may have known Star Girls in some shit of her own. Yeah, I told you she's not what she seemed. She's had special training for something shady. Oh, you mean that kind of training, like a spy? He scratches his chin. Maybe. The kind of people who are after her, I guess she'd have to be. These people, who are they? They're powerful. He looks out the window, connected to the moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your system, she'd be ghost away. That's all he knows. That's all she's told him. And why would you help someone like that by taking on a murder? Why would I? He shrugs. I guess we are mad. We are, I guess we are all. I guess we are mad. All sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. So who killed the Merc then? Any leads? Not yet. Just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside, behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. Okay, outside. They must have used the secret passageway to get there. That's why the secret passageway is connected to the whole thing, because that's a way up to their room from the outside. Got it. So what are you thinking? I'm thinking. Someone's past caught up to them. Either her, or his. Hers, you mean... I mean, the people after Clash A, maybe the shop missed. Maybe it was meant for her. I like that, the young man nods. Been thinking the same thing myself. You had ideas about his past too? I do. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns, training, years of bad blood, probably. Or it could have been someone else from Crennel. He pauses to think. I'll t tell you what I'd do. I'd check the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do. If I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. He's calm now. Threw all that turmoil away and became himself again. These theories, not bad. Don't buy either one, but still, this guy's not as dumb as he looks. Whose idea was it to hang him anyway? Hers? In a manner of speaking. Remember the two girls? Maybe talk about the other one. Earlier said the girls asked for your help. Was this the other girl? That's right. He blinks. It was her idea to hang him. I liked it, for political reasons. It sends a good message. It's her, isn't it? The, eight, the drug trafficker. The missing 8th Hardy. The big guy steps towards you. Bella, you think too much. He's off, alright? You're gonna hurt your head. That woman is just affiliated with the Hardy Boys. You don't know her anyway. You know, it's okay for there to be a Hardy girl, Titus. His face sets like concrete. He shakes his head solemnly. 
We're hardy boys. That's it. Can you tell me anything about this affiliate? Name, look, current location. Nope. He says, you're not gonna get, you, you're not getting to her. It's Laget you want to talk to. Alright, thank you for this, Titus. I'll go talk to her. For the last time. You do that. He grabs his beard and swir swirls it in his hand. Then thinks of something. Hey, cop, before you go. She, uh, he looks up. Laget came to Marnez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there's nowhere left to go. The Union takes you in. Now, uh, she refused that protection, but... You, but you would still prefer if we didn't take her away? That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who ended up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. We'll, uh, take that into account. Lieutenant slides his notebook into his coat pocket. He turns to leave. Alright, well we learned a lot there. So we got the whole, we pretty much got the whole story from Titus. When can we do the smoker? Sometime after nine. Okay. I just wanted to check, so... We might not get everything done today, but that's a good position to be in, rather than where we were in the previous day, trying to stall for time. Now we're definitely in a position where we have more things than the time we have to fit them in. I prefer that. It means that we're always doing something. Right, back up here. We now know the guy's name as well. I wonder if that's going to lead to anything else with Tlashé. I don't know. I kind of want to look up that name and go... How do you actually say that? Well, you know, whatever. I'll go for my pronunciation, keep it consistent. Right. And hopefully it doesn't make me say it about ten times in one sentence, as it usually does, with, like with uh, orangey or something, that one. Hello. It's always good to see you. He cracks a weary smile, leaning back against the railing. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, to being here with you, and what's to come. The Hardy Boys told us what really happened. I understand. She puts her coffee mug on the table. You lied to us, miss. I didn't lie, not a lot. I've done my absolute best not to, I just... Tis true, the lady hath tried to avoid falsehoods. Shut up, drama, you're lying to me too. Come on, she lied through her teeth and you know it. It was a mistake. She winces. Sorry for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first between you two, then move on to questions. No, it's not good. It's the opposite of that. This will let her dictate the terms of your... Shh, I can't hear what she's saying. Why did you waste our time then? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were trying to help me. She looks at her feet. I had the shit I'd gotten into. That's not a good enough reason. You're right, there's more. More? You answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral in turn. She reaches for a new cigarette. Briefly glancing over her shoulder to the sea, as she's done time and time again. A grand expanse of water reaches over the bay into the horizon, wine dark in the evening light. What lies beyond it? The pale, the mundi isola, the occident, and then orange, the old, old world. The conference centers, the people who are angry at her, her past. Um, what's the RCM's involvement with the moral in turn got to do with this? You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. She lights the cigarette. What's going on? What, what did you do? Just business, but bad business for some people in the moral in turn. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will. What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you foul my name, take me in for questioning. Enter me into the moral intern mill. There's a wince and a pained smile. Well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. Mill? Enter me into the moral intern mill. I'm assuming that's Latari database? Okay. So, see, there's something military related with her? That fits into the spy thing. Actually, this murder did have a little to do with her. Um. Well. Let's see. What did you do to have these people after you? 
It's not nice, but not illegal. Not here in Revachal or even in Orange. What exactly did you do? Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company. The kind you really don't fuck with. I took the ledgers. Two decades worth of accounting. He taps on his notebook. I need the names of the companies involved and who hired you. The job was uh, Lustuen, a county savings bank. They sound small, but the part of the Luscap conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. But she really destroyed them. She still feels it. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know. But they're after me too, along with Luscap and their friends in the MI. She breathes out heavily. Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. Loose cap. These people engineer financial disasters in, this, in second world countries. The conglomerate also includes the Bank of Consecration, uh, Erberg, and the popular Papa Lolo line of dairy products. Um, Papa Lolo! Yeah, Papa fucking Lolo wants to kill me. She smiles. Um, okay. Well, that's a lot of shit you've gotten yourself into. It is. Many people lost their jobs. Not just C-suite, ordinary people. What I did to get accounting. She shakes her head at the thought. A lot of people got hurt, she concludes. But that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. That can wait. Look into her eyes. There's more. What did you do? Aye. She looks down and then into your eyes. One of them killed themselves because of me. Hmm. That's bad. How did you how do you live with yourself? I don't. She shrugs. How do you live with yourself? By not remembering a single goddamn thing. Well that would do the trick, yes. She almost devoured the cigarette she's she lit. She looks at it sadly. Uh, what happened here the night she uh, the night he died? We were there, she points to the window. The silhouette of the bed is visible. Together. In bed, I mean. Tell me exactly what happened. Okay, she takes a deep breath. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. I was on my back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. I turned back to him. She breathes out a moment's silence. His eyes were looking through me and his mouth was open, dumb. I could see, I could... Her chest rises and falls with each word. She keeps herself together and says it. I knew he was dead before he fell down on top of me. You were right. He did enjoy the moment of his death. So, my feeling was right earlier. He was enjoying the moment of his death. Yes, but how did you know that? You asked her before if he enjoyed it. She avoided it. How did I not discern it was a lie? Drama start to notice that it's being manipulated. You know how. You just had a hunch. Detectives have these sometimes. An another hit. Lieutenant looks at you in acknowledgement. Then what happened? He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor there. He points through the window. He only had his boots on. I bit, bit the pillow not to scream, then ran downstairs. There's a long pause. She stands there, her arms at her sides. Then she continues. I waited for the second shot to come, for me. I thought there would be one. It never came. She's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right down to her fingernails. Um, are you sure you're not making this up? I'm not lying to you. She looks down, wincing. Her cigarette has singed her fingers. You may sometimes be bad at reading her, but this time, truly, she's telling you how it really went down. Drama, I can't trust you. Although Volition didn't pop up, so maybe. She throws it away and immediately proceeds to light another one. Oh, what time was this? When did it happen? It would help us if you could be as precise as possible. Uh, 11.30 to quarter past midnight. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. That's okay. 
He makes a note. Where well, you are inebriated. Not as much as usual. He done a line, plus other things. I was drinking. Wait, Titus said she was growing her jaw, a jaw off, much more than usual. Much more than usual. Titus said you looked pretty high. Oh yeah, she tilts her head. I did one of his lines just to clear my head. Did you see or hear the shelter in the course of this? No. What did you do then? Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up. Drew the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot, just a little. He was still on the floor, slouched. I, I couldn't be there with him anymore, so I ran down, out my room, into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. Run, woman! Run past them and out into the street where it's dark and people move, to the lorries, to the intersection, as far as you can. Why didn't you run away from here? As a matter of fact, why are you here now? I already ran. I ran from an entire Isola. There is... I can't run any further. Not with these people. This is as far as it gets. What happened after you ran downstairs? Uh, Sylvie was tending the bar. She looks down. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. They were having such a good time. She pauses. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby? Before we continue, who is Ruby? Ruby, you know, the leader. The leader? The leader of what? The Hardy Boys, she says as if it's self-evident. I thought Hardy was the leader of the Hardy Boys. Well, nominally, yes. Ruby's the one they go to when things happen, like things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. Would you say she is the eighth Hardy Boy? Okay, uh, why not? Okay, let's go on. What then? We also leveled up again. We have three skill points saved. Well, Ruby said, let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation. That I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. That's what she does, you know, take care of things. I helped her get the body to the bathroom. We used a belt to... Pull him up under the shower to keep him upright. To mislead you, they were tampering with the body. To produce lividity matching a hanging? Yes. We completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. What was this, 20 minutes after death? About 20, yes. Ruby explained that it would make the blood... Well, you know what it does. She looks at the ground, then raises her light brown eyes to meet yours. Then what did you do? Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just looking at Lily. In the bathroom, I had to put his clothes back on, his armor too. It was tough, but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I'd gotten him ready by then. They carried him out. I knew what they were going to do. Make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. What did you do while they were hanging him? Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while, that we should lay low or something, so I did. This Ruby, where is Ruby now? I don't know, I haven't seen her since. We need to take this question to the Hardy Boys. Interesting, why did this Ruby go through so much trouble to hide something that someone else did? Look into this later. What are you doing? Coming up with the theory, she said Ruby knew something was wrong before she said anything. How come? It was loud now, so she couldn't have heard the shot. It's ominous. You're already coming up with theories that put the blame on someone other than Clagé. Good point, Volition. Thanks for keeping me uh, honest here. When it happened, did you hear a gunshot? When he was shot, she thinks. I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. The gunshot wasn't that loud? This is something to keep in mind, uh, keep in mind when assessing the uh, distance of the shot. Okay. So either... Well, I guess that's saying that it would have to be quite far away, right? I'm trying to think. From here, right? If you were shooting, I, either you have to be, like, way away on a tall building, or I guess you could be in the tower that's just over this way, in the Doom commercial area. 
Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Or, this isn't true. That's the other thing. This could not be true. In which case, it was closer. Or, I don't know. Maybe the weapon had some kind of silencing, something to muffle its, the actual shot itself. I don't know. Could be. Anyway, I still think they came through that door and shot through there, but maybe not. Did you kill Lily? What? She gathers last vestiges of her strength. Why do I put myself through this insanity to get myself cornered like this? There's a silence. The wind picks up. He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. I know that, but I would never hurt him. He was a serviceman. He must have had a gun somewhere lying around close to her hand. Now you guys suddenly have theories pouring out when they're obviously just stabs in the dark? Um, He must have had a weapon nearby. Did you use that? No, I specifically asked him not to carry firearms when he was with me. He only had his stupid armor. It's okay if you did it in self-defense. I did not kill him to defend myself from rape, she says. I told you before, this wasn't what happened. True, sire. Tis true. Downstairs, people have this crazy idea that you killed him. I'm had to sad to hear that. They must have said it in some fit of frustration or under pressure. They couldn't have meant it. I've talked to them after it happens. No one has implicated me. Okay, I'd like you to answer some other questions, miss. Like what? She waits, her light brown eyes wandering over the floor, over your face. Could the people after you have killed them? That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the last break. And? Well, I thought they'd found me. They'd killed him to punish me. All last week, I tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone. She looks at her cigarette. So, they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. But maybe it did. I just don't know. She shakes her head. I don't know anything. We can't go after loose gap. Not yet. There are other saner leads. I didn't ask I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. If there's one thing I know that it's that you're gonna get nothing from there. Why did you call the cops if you're hiding? Because I'm an idiot. The answer comes fast. Which is an indicator of truth. Idiot? He's nothing of the sort. I don't think so. Why did you do it? You have to understand. The people around here, no one was making the call. They kept rotting, then they picked his clothes off, then that little fucker threw stones at him. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud, thud. She shakes her head. So I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the last thing I do in Revachal. She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could not have been a lie. That is impossible. Oh god, that was a lie too. Who made the call then? She did, of course. When, when was the window changed? Last week. Angus and Titus's brother, I think. He's called Tibbs, took care of it. She takes a drag. You should have another look at that window after this. Reconstruct the scene. It's right there. In her bedroom inside? Yes. You see the glass sparkling out the corner of your eye. We're done here for now. She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke, just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Um, Lieutenant glances at you, then at the door. He's thinking, are we done here? Or should we arrest her? She's a flight risk and she lied to you. She should be taken into custody. No, that won't be necessary. Just leave her alone. She's been through enough. She doesn't need this police brutality. This guy won't budge. You have to wake Multiface up forcefully if you want to continue pushing her. Alright. In God's name, wake up, drama. Look at all of this. Manipulated your skill set, lied about Lily enjoying death, semen sample avoidance, lied about making the call. Go. Who? What? Dear God, you've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She's smoking mirrors and will-o'-wisps. She didn't give her... She didn't give you her real name either. Why would she? Arrest her immediately before she further entangles you in her web of lies. Take it easy. Don't overcompensate with this course correction. Ask questions first. Yes, yeah, start at the top. Choose at the bottom. That's how we've always done it. No rush. That I love this meta one. Where it's like, start at the top of the questions list and then, you know, the bottom ones are the concludes. That is... I like it. See? 
Kim, why have we not arrested her yet? There may be a grounds here, for at least for an extended detention. A little whimper. The young woman hears you. She's looking around. You know, I think you didn't make that call to the station. I did. She takes a step forward. What is this? I called your desk or whatever it is. The numbers are all over town. Call 8102 for emergencies. There was an older woman on the other end. She sounded like she was smoking. She took my complaint. She coughed. That is the emergencies desk number. Anyone could know that, Sarah. By looking around and calling the desk, I don't believe a single word she says. What time did you make the call? Thursday night. It was late. Sometime after 12. Lieutenant nods in your direction. It checks out. Anyone could know the number, and that someone coughed. It means nothing. But I... But I know the time of the call, too. She breathes in. I have not been 100% truthful with you officers, but I am now. Your real name isn't Classe Amandu. I agree. Lieutenant uh, turns to her. You wouldn't give us your real name, not when people are after you. Okay. Her voice cracks suddenly, like there's a garrote around her neck. Okay, what? Okay, it's not. Uh, good, you can tell me the truth. You log your work every week. It's all transmitted to uh, Commissar. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name, so I lied. Like I lied before, like I did at LCSB. I have to lie all the time. She looks at her hands, her fingernails chipped white. I'm so tired of it. Was the passport bullshit too? The passport you kept hid you keep hidden? No, it's submerged in a plastic buoy on the coast in the reeds. It just doesn't say Classe Amandu. It says uh, Anouk Major Smith. Falsify documents? Passport and visa, she nods. Given to me by my employer. I can't even use them. My employer probably leaked the name Major Smith to hurt me. Why would they do that? I didn't show up at to a rendezvous. They didn't. They don't take that lightly. She rushes to explain. I didn't show up because I was afraid they'd do something to me. The job was finished. I'm just a liability now. She fears an arrest right here and now. This has been an awful turn of events for her. Where's this boy? Uh, west of the boardwalk in the reeds, on the coast there. She points to a, uh, uh, toward a clump of ruins on the western horizon. I put it there when I first arrived. Haven't been there since. I'm not sure I could even find it now. It's useless. Where's the boardwalk in the reeds? We have to check this boy out. Lieutenant makes a note of it. You're welcome to it. It's in the reeds northwest of here, past a broken sewage pipe, right near the waterline. Tell me your real name. It's, uh, Katarzyn Alexiez. Alexiez? Alexiez? That's a lot of... Like, this C, Z, J, all in close proximity just messed me up. The smile on their face is timid, almost painfully so. It's a grad name. Zmisk, or Yugograd in origin. Not occidental at all. It smells of motor oil. Taj Taja. Economic desolation and rock music infused alcoholism. Um, hold on. Katarzyn uh, Alassier is not even an Orangier's name, is it? It's not even Mundi, it's Grad. My parents were some misc immigrants, but I'm nationalized. Orangies, all I remember is Orange. She's silent. Alice is my father's name. Um. Finally, we meet at uh, Katarzyn Alice. She nods. Her round eyes meet yours. They seem moist from the wind on the roof. You're probably not even Miss Orange four, uh, 37, are you? I am. Her smile quivers. They can never take my sash and my scepter from me. Yes, they can. For lying. All right, enough. She nods. Uh, her back straight, ready for whatever is to come next. What if I told you you're under arrest? Katarzyn. Alizie. I haven't done anything. She backs up against the railing, with a forced smile on her face. Anything illegal? She purposefully, purposefully misrepresented information crucial to the case. Fucking mind games, enough. That's right, gang. Stern and merciless now. Stern and merciless as we reel her in. Um, 
you misrepresented uh, information about the case. Without the Harley's confession, we'd know nothing. The lieutenant produces a pair of handcuffs. Please, no. Her eyes become round with fear as she tries to back off, uh, back further off. I think I know who did it. Who shot Lily? I can tell you. I can help you. What do you know? Who shot him? She sat for a second as if looking into herself for certainty. Then, in a hushed voice, she says, Gearing up for this betrayal is hard for her. Ruby. And how could she have killed him? She could, could have had access to the roof. She points to the barred door next to the window. You noticed that door there, right? Maybe it leads downstairs. She could have come to the roof through that, taking the shot right here where I stand. It was dark outside. I wouldn't have seen her. Then slip back downstairs without anyone noticing. That is possible. Interesting theory. Did she know that that door exists? Had you been out here with her? Yes, of course. She's been up here many times. Uh, jacking private sessions off the ring antenna. She used to come here to drink on the roof of me before it got weird. Why do you think it was her? She has this thing for me. Ever since I met her and the boys downstairs, she's been pretty frank about what she wants. And what is that? Sex and more. I made the mistake of confiding in her. I told her I was on the run. She started protecting me. It became an unhealthy relationship. When I started spending time with Lily, he says in a near whisper, she told me to end it. She said there would be shit if I didn't. It was not a good meeting. We stopped talking after that, but... I don't understand. Lieutenant sounds incredulous. She still has the cuffs... He still has the cuffs in, her, in his hand. What exactly in your relationship made you think she's romantically interested in you? She said she's in love with me. She even asked me to run away with her when I told her I'm a fugitive. She started developing notions about our relationship. Alright, here's the thing that doesn't add up about this with me. If she thinks that Ruby killed him, why was the first person she went to ask for help Ruby? That doesn't add up, right? That doesn't add up at all. And you led her on? Lieutenant narrows his eyes. A little. I was flattered, you know. But then I had to let her off, and it was not easy. I came to regret being friendly with her. She looks at her feet. We maybe kiss, nothing more. This is just sensationalism and guesses. I know what it sounds like, that's why I didn't want to tell you before. She raises her eyes to meet yours. But I knew what had happened when I came downstairs. Somehow she knew Lely was dead. She wasn't surprised at all. When you came up here, she was calm as a stone. She cleaned it all up, like she had a plan. This is a familiar theory, you had it too, remember? Could it be that Ruby was covering up after herself, the lynching? Yet again, you're coming up with this. The worst th thing is, it may be true. When Ruby said there would be shit happening if you didn't end your relationship with the deceased, was she threatening you? She came over one night, drunk. She said she'd turn my life into a living hell. I've been threatened before, so I can tell when somebody knows how to do it. And she's a pro. She must be. To keep the Hardys in line, I tried uh, severing ties with her after that. I thought it worked, but she looked through the window of her room. Some of that fear is still with her. She exhales sharply. What are you talking about? She's afraid you'll arrest her. Okay. That's it for Ruby. Okay. And what? Arrest the liar now. Who? Her. Stop letting her distract you. Um. That's all good, but I think we should still take you in. Just in case. Still. She says, her voice breaking. After all this, sir, please, it's a shitty world. I know I'm shitty too. I know. Her hand turns into her fist slowly, crushing the cigarette she's still holding. But I don't deserve to be sent to the moral in turn and ground into pace just because I disturbed the sanctity of accounting and s at some multinational. She's gearing up for a last stand. This is it. What do you deserve then? I don't know. She throws away the cigarette. To spend my days with smoke and drink and dance and wallowing and shit just like everyone else. What other option do I have? You have those station calls, right? Where I have to show up to the station or I'll become a fugitive? You can write me one. You don't have to take me in right now. I promise I won't go out anymore at night. I'll be right here. I know you can do that. Just let me come in on my own in two months or maybe even one month. That's all I need. You have to do the form. He looks at your ledger. That's it. I'm calling it. Kim is beyond compromised. Definitely, sire. What will have changed in two months or one month? Everything could change. She looks around. This city, the extradition rules, 
The people after me could be in jail or maybe Revishal. She falls silent. There was desperation there in that silence. A cornered animal looking for a way out. Maybe Revishal could be free and I could be tried in a free Revishal, an independent state that doesn't hand in its detainees over to the moral in turn. You think that's going to happen in one or two months? I find that hard to believe, miss. The handcuffs jingle in his hand. I also find that hard to believe. But actually, I think what's better, this has got nothing to do with anything. I know, but... She doesn't know what to say. The political gambit has failed. It was her last card. There's nothing more she can say. The final decision is yours. You alone stand on the, thro on the throne of your mind. I've made my choice. She looks at you in silence, her face filled with fear, lips parted. Wait, if you arrest her, Kim will have to transport her. You'll be without your partner for the rest of the day. Shut up! He's making a decision and it's his to make. Kim, arrest her before this drags out any longer. I know, I wanted to do things with Kim tonight, but I can't. She has to be arrested. If there was a delay, like, you just stay here 10 seconds. We're going to run over, speak to the smoker and come back. I'd do that, but no. She, she has to be arrested. I will escort you to the motor carriage outside, miss. With a muffled whimper, she extends her wrists. They're white, bony, exposed below the rolled up sleeves of her jumpsuit. He puts the handcuffs away. These won't be necessary. I will take you to station 57 myself and slow the extradition process as much as I can. It may be possible to stall it indefinitely, but you will be safer there for the purposes of this investigation. He turns to you. I can do this on my own. She's not an immediate flight risk. See you tomorrow morning, officer, downstairs at the Whirling in Rags. No! No! I know that she's been arrested. I know that that's all good for us. I think it's the right decision. But you know what it means, don't you? We can't speak to the smoker. And Kim won't be there for karaoke. Which means we can't do the karaoke. Oh no. That's awful. Well, I'm just going downstairs in case something happens downstairs. Uh, make Titus give up Ruby's location and inspect uh, Clagé's boy. Yeah, well, I think that we could um, do the location, but I want to hold off. The boy we can definitely do at some point without Kim. Uh, although, we can go to sleep now, so that's fine. Yeah, don't know. Maybe we should try and do that suggestion one, actually. The one where it said it'd be difficult to do it if Kim's around. Yeah. You know what, we'll do that, because it's in the same area as the um, place where we can get bed for the night. So, the motor carriage is gone. And with that, I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.